Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Elizabeth. It's good to have you. Today I'm going to be showing you how I design this bookmark in Embird. The software that I'm using for digitizing is Embird. So I'm going to be showing you how I create this um, bookmark and it's a pencil um, using Embird. So I'm going to now open a uh, new document. So I'll go up here to design, new. I'm not gonna save changes to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my hoop over here. So my pencil uh, design is going to be about 15 uh, centimeters. So I'm going to pick a hoop for my Janome. So I now have my new document up and I'm using the 140 by 200 millimeter um, hoop here. So today I'm going to be using two different uh, types of stitch. So for example, this is a fill stitch. So for example, if I just mark this just to show you, I'm going to right click to finish the object. This uh, type of stitch is a fill stitch. So if I generate the stitches, you can see that there. And this is actually an outline stitch. So if I do another, I need to make sure that these two nodes are connecting if I want to close it to finish it off. And if I generate that and go to 3D, we can see if I zoom in to that one, it's just an outline and that this is a fill stitch. So those are the two types of stitches I'm going to be using today. So if I just delete that, Okay. Right, so to set up my document, I'm going to be uh, putting in some guidelines. So from this uh, top part of your um, screen where you could see your measurements, if you left click and drag down, you drag down a guideline so I'm going to place one there and place another one about there uh, let me just count that that is 15 centimeters one, two three four five six seven eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 is actually going to be here. Vertical guidelines so come in to this side of your screen where you can see all your measurements and i'm going to right click again and drag some guidelines in and my pencil is going to be four centimeters wide so drag another line so here you can see 
I'm I've got uh, guidelines that are four centimeters across and 15 centimeters going down make my guidelines a lot easier to see because the guidelines at the moment are similar to the grid marks I'm going to change that color so I'm going to go into edit preferences guidelines and just change that to a color that's easier for you to see so hopefully that's a little bit clearer now for you to see so I'm going to place another um, horizontal guideline roughly at the two and a half mark from my top one which is here so one two two and a half and then I'm going to place one that is a five centimeters from this bottom line so I'm going to drag another one down so one two three four and five just going to zoom in there and make sure it is on that five centimeter mark right there so those are all my uh, guidelines placed um, that I would want to use for now so I'm going to go into design and uh, just lock my sorry into edit and just lock my guidelines in place just so that I don't move them so let's begin digitizing so in order for my um, design to uh, sequence properly I'm going to start with the actual lines that go vertically um, on my pencil I'm going to start with those lines first so if I go into my uh, my stitch type so I'm, I'm picking an outline and I'm going to be starting my line here for example at this guideline so if I click that and just go down to where I would like it to stop so here's my line this uh, node here is actually a um, it creates a curve if you click on it uh, left click and pull you'll create a um, you'll create a curve but I don't want that so I'm gonna come up here and just make it straight if I go into um, so if I now go into my edit which is here to edit the selected uh, stitch so if I click edit here and come over here I can see the different types of things that I can do to this stitch in order to uh, edit the nodes so we can see here I can snap to work area if you just hover over it middle point first snap to grid line so I'd like to click that which is snap to grid line So now that I've clicked snap to grid, I can now move this. And it should snap to that grid like that. 
I'm going to generate the stitches so generate the stitches is up here or you can right click come over here and right click and generate the stitches there but I, I often go up here depends it's just easier to access it here so if I zoom in you can see um, and if I we're on 3d so we can see our first stitch here if I go into edit um, you can see here that I've started here so where you have this kind of node that is um, not filled that's where I started to draw my um, stitch type and if I scroll down to where I ended you can see here that it is more of a filled node so I can actually I'm going to extend that just a little bit down just to compensate do a poor compensation okay so since I have um, started at the top so if I scroll out I started here and drew my line going down I now need to place another um, another line here and to stop my machine from stitching a line and then cutting and then stitching another line I need to do a connection just so that it's a bit more seamless but before I do that I'm going to actually assign a um, a stitch uh, style to it so I'm gonna go so again we're gonna right click here go into uh, parameters and I'm going to assign a satin stitch to this so my uh, width of my satin stitch is uh, two millimeters I'm fine with that and it's going to do an auto uh, select of an underlay I'm also fine with that and I'm going to hit apply so to save me from um, drawing another line I'm just going to copy and paste uh, this already drawn uh, stitch so I'm just going to do Control C Control V I'm now going to shift it to where I want to have my second satin stitch and um, I can't actually see the um, grid line so if I bring that back up that will be a bit more helpful so I've just gone back into because it was on 3d and once you hit 3d um, your um, your grid lines are no longer there but if you go normal then they're back again so I've shift it over slightly now here is how we make a connection so in order to make a connection you need to it will do a connection where you stopped so for example with this one if I was to hit ed the edit edit node we can see it's done the same thing again because I simply copied and pasted it that we're starting here and we're finishing here but I want it to be the reverse so I want it to start here and finish here because it will just help the machine move a lot smooth smoother so if you come up here reverse nodes order if you click on that we can see here that now my start is here and my finish is here I can now either uh, tick that or, or just generate the stitches okay so I've generated the stitches and we can see here now I've got two satin stitches 
but you can also see here that uh, there is a pair of scissors there and I don't want my machine to do any cutting so from here I'm going to click on this second one which is highlighted right click and go down to create connection and we can see here if I just zoom in that there is a connection uh, just right here we've got a connection here and if we look here also we can see that there is a connection in between so if I just uh, run the uh, simulator so you can see that speed it up so it's creating the satin stitch on the first one and then we can see it didn't stop it just went on to do the second uh, satin stitch so it's really helpful to, to add uh, connections in your design just so that you're digitizing properly and your machine is not under pressure by, you know, tying in a knot and then cutting and then starting again. Okay, right, let's move on. So I've got my second line here for my pencil. Now I'm going to copy and paste this one. So control C, control V, and then move it to where I want. And I'm just using the shift and um, direction key on my um, computer to do that. I'll sort out the kind of uh, my placements in a minute. Right, if I now go back into edit, just click on that we can see again it's telling me I'm starting here and I am finishing here and because the previous one finished here I can make a connection here so let me just come out of that click onto that third one right click create connection and there you have it we have a connection up here so now I'm going to take this one control C control V to copy it and then shift it into place and there we have it again I'm going to make a connection right click create connection and I have another connection here okay so I have the lines down for my uh, pencil the next bit of my design is I'm now going to design the eraser um, in this section here so fill stitch Right, I've stopped my uh, fill stitch here because if I was to take my next node from here and drop it there it will actually uh, click on this node so I'm stopping just before this first node that I um, created and now I'm going to actually just drag it over place it on top right uh, then actually before I finish it off I need to change some of these into a straight line just for ease so all these are going to be straight these round ones are going to be straight and that one is also going to be straight this one here I would like a curve in my eraser so I'm actually going to just pull it out slightly and let me zoom in here so and on this side I'm going to pull it out to give it a slight curve 
and then I'm going to hit the check mark so I'm happy with that um, I also haven't um, thought about uh, the pull compensation for this uh, eraser so I'm just going to do that now I'm just going to edit this so I'm going to hit the edit and I'm just going to pull this down slightly just for my pull compensation click this and bring this also down just to finish it off right finish object and there we have it zoom back out right so um i've got some pull compensation there and i'm going to assign it a color so uh, i'm going to pick this pink and what i do is i left click on the color holding my left key down i'm going to drag it to where i want it and then let go and we have our color assigned to it so if i do generate stitches right we can see it's coming together so i now have my my rubber what so i'm going to digitize is the metal bit that you see that uh connects the eraser part to the actual wooden part of the pencil so i'm going to be creating my metal part in this um, space here so for this again i'm going to go into my uh fill stitch and i'm actually going to use a shape so in order to use if i just come out of here for a minute if you click on shape for example you will see that it's grayed out you actually cannot select anything from there so what you do in this case is you need to click a type of a uh, stitch that you want to use so it's going to be a fill stitch I'm going to drop a node so I can drop it here once I've dropped the node in I can now go into my shapes and I can pick whichever uh, shape I'd like so for this I'm going to pick a um, rounded rectangle once I've picked that I can now Pull out the shape that I want. So I'm going to click and pull like that. So what I could have done is I could have actually dropped that node here because it pulls it out on both sides. But um, there's my uh, rounded rectangle. Once you've pulled out your shape, you need to right click go to elements and then you can click the check mark so now that I've done that I can bring my shape into my space but as you can see it is not uh, big enough okay first of all let's assign it a color so I'm going to give it this gray color right now i can resize this i can resize this to what i would like it to be so as that is clicked i can come up here to transform click on my transform window and it will bring up this box right here okay if i go into this window this can this is where i can change my uh the size of my object so we can see here the width and the height okay so with the height what I would want it to be if I click on this arrow here I can go straight in and uh, change it here so I can change it currently is 1.4 millimeters if I change that to let's change that to six millimeters okay hit the check mark Oh, before I do that, sorry, what I want to do there is untick this um, aspect ratio because if I change this, it would automatically change that. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that. 
click on this arrow here change that to six apply okay so we can see here that it's made it um wider right to change the actual uh the width of it i can either click on these numbers using my mouse key my left mouse i can click up that way so left mouse will take you increase it right mouse will decrease it okay but i want to be uh more accurate and quicker so i'm going to click on this back arrow here and i'm going to change that to so the width of my pencil is um four centimeters and i want to go over slightly so i'm going to put 44 apply and we'll just see how that looks okay let's see so here it is yep i like the way that looks and i'm going to go slightly because if we see here if we can see where my um eraser is ending i've um done a pull comp there let me zoom in a bit more okay better right i've done a pull comp there this is how big my eraser is is where i've put this grid line but i've done a pull comp so it just goes just underneath that uh that guideline there okay you need the pull compensation so that when your design stitches out there are no gaps so there's going to be a bit of um overlaying with um when you're digitizing just so you don't have any gaps so i'm happy with that so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to um copy it so Control c Control v and i'm now going to shift it down and again it's going to overlap ever so slightly so if i was to bring it down here we can see the gap so i'm going to overlap it ever so slightly like that okay so let's have a look at right now let's select everything because i always like to um as i'm digitizing i like to um simulate as i do that so i'm going to generate the stitches let's go into 3d mode and let's have a look at what it actually looks like when it's stitched so your uh, simulator is here so if you click that it will show you let's just speed this up a bit so we're not here all day so there's a line it's not stopping it's not cutting that's all one color so that's running smoothly okay once it's finished that it's actually going to the machining is going to stop because there's a color change if i press play this is the rubber or eraser let's go into 3d mode okay that's that done and then we press play again because that color's stopped color change and we have our second part that i've run this uh simulator i saw here that I, I don't have a connection here so i need to actually add a connection so i'm going to go into the last one i did left click and uh, create connection and it's created a connection there so if i uh, just click those two just to run a simulation on it 
so I'm gonna click on these and just run a sim simulator on that let's just have a look at how it's going to stitch that out okay I'm happy with that okay I want to actually change this uh, stitch type so let's go into parameters I'm going to change this uh, stitch type into an auto column okay so I've got an auto column here I'm gonna apply that generate stitches and I'm going to do it to this one as well so I could have actually did that before I um, copied and pasted it so I'm not having to do this again but that's fine let's now have a look at it again let's see how it simulates Up a bit. Okay, so we can see here it's doing a um, nice uh, column stitch, which is actually a nice effect. While I'm at it and while I'm changing the types of uh, stitches, I'm actually going to change this one. So I'm going to go back into parameters. And what I would like to do is uh, change the density here. So I just, I don't want it to be so heavy so if you right click you can actually by increasing the density it makes it a more um, sketchy uh, type of fill so I think I'll go up to about maybe five I think that's that's I'm fine with that okay and we can see it's using fill one here there's different types of um, stitch types here that you can you can use but I think this is quite nice for the for the um, eraser so I'm gonna stick with that right, apply and generate okay brilliant this is going to be the tip of my pencil so if I put a node here and then I'm going to go straight up to this point here okay so now I'm going to change this to a um, straight line because that can be straight I might just zoom in ever so slightly okay so we're here I might just pull this out a little bit more okay there right for this actual part I want these curves um, I want the curves here so what I can do actually is I can just drag a guideline here just to kind of help me out a little so that there and then I can pull these up to meet that line right there so it gives it that kind of sharpened pencil um, effect all right let's have a look at the bottom make sure everything's in place okay I'm gonna click over here and I'm going to click finished okay so we can see here now that that uh, pencils done I'm going to assign it a color let's give it a if you double click on this you'll get a um, you can actually edit the colors a bit more I don't want it that dark not that it matters because um, you know when you pick your thread 
that's what's going to determine uh, what the color of your stitches is but just so that you can see the actual effect of it all okay so here is my um, my tip here right the next thing I'm going to do is um, I want a different style of stitch so I'm gonna go into parameters and I'm actually going to pick uh, this second filled stitch and I'm actually going to play with the um, directions of the stitch so I might uh, let's go let's try a minus 35 a minute and let's see what that does apply generate stitches and let's go into 3d mode yep that looks that's good but i think we can play with it a little bit more um let's go up let's see what happens apply hmm. i think i actually preferred it the other way let's try that okay I think I like the way that looks it's given it a kind of more of a, a, a pencil type look okay so so far we have our lines for our pencil our eraser the metal part of our pencil the wooden part of our pencil now to uh, finish it off will be the actual lead part of our pencil so let's just zoom in okay and I only need a tiny uh, it doesn't need to be that big just a small kind of uh, lead part here so I'm going to go into a field stitch and because it's so small I am just going to um, stitch it on top of this I, I, I don't believe it's going to really have a well we can check the density actually in a minute I don't think it will you know have a horrible impact on On the design oops I don't want to do that uh, let's go there let's go here let's pull that bit up widen that ever so slightly I think let's zoom in so we can see a little bit closer I sometimes you know I start digitizing and then I figure oh yeah you can zoom in make your life easier let's change this to a straight line so it's not given a horrible curve okay so I think I am happy with that oh that needs to be straight also And that also needs to be straight no curves anywhere okay and I'm going to finish that off finish okay and I'm going to assign that black because it's lead okay I can see it's just showing a little bit of the um, a little bit of the uh, wooden part of the pencil there but we can um edit that but just so this video isn't super long okay i can either push that up or i can um pull this down so let's do that i'll just do that quickly go into edit and we could pull that down just ever so slightly and uh, generate the stitches okay so it's looking a lot better now 
a lot, a lot better. So let's actually uh, watch it uh, stitch out on the simulator. So I'm going to just generate stitches here. Go as big as I can without cutting. Okay, I think that's as big as I can go so we can see the whole thing. So let's uh, simulate. Let's add some speed to that. Okay, so I can see here now that it's stitched out that this line here is um, sticking out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit it. Okay, so I'm going to click on it and we're just going to pull that out a bit more just so it's covering that part of the pencil. Okay, that's better. Generate. Okay, so we can see it's looking a whole lot better now. So I'm not sure if I mentioned before, this um, stitch out is going to be on faux leather. So what I need to do now is I need to create a stitch on the outside which is going to be my placement stitch and then I need to do a second stitch uh, which will be the final stitch of when I put the, the back of my faux leather um, onto the machine and it will stitch it all together so we have a nice uh, back and you can't see any of the um, stitches I'm also aware that this is not centered but I'll do all that so I'm just going to show you quickly how I um, digitize the outside um, stitch. So let's zoom in. And we're going to use a um, this stitch type. So from here, I'm going to Just drop some nodes on the outside of this. I'm going to be, just so that I'm not going all the way around, I need to uh, mirror this. So I'm going to click on this and hopefully it should just mirror what I've just done and it did. So I'm not going all the way around. That is a simple way of kind of doing a uh, digitizing around a shape. Um, now I am going to just correct all these so they're not so sharp. So this can be curved like that and yep I am happy with the way that looks so that's going to be our placement stitch okay I could make it um I could change it and make it even wider if it's too close so if I go back into my transform window if you click on here your object is selected you can actually click down here and it will bring up the this uh, window here what I can do is I can change this so I can instead of having it at uh, 155 millimeters I can go up Or 152 was so I'm not 155 so I'm gonna take it to 155 okay and this is checked keep aspect ratio I can click apply and it's actually uh, given more of a border around it 
okay I'm going to assign that a color so let's give it a color yellow okay that is going to be my placement uh, my placement stitch okay I can duplicate that for the final stitch so I can do Control C and V I've got another one that you can see at the bottom here so this is going to be the final stitch I'm going to assign that a color that can be blue however this needs to be the first thing that stitches out so I know where to place my faux leather when I put it down so I'm going to uh, click on this first one that I've done and I'm going to uh, right click and drag it to the top you can see that there's a little box at the bottom of that arrow so I'm going to take it up to this first uh, thing that's going to be stitched out let go of my mouse and click before okay so now that's going to stitch out before um, before any of the, the actual pencil is done my placement stitch is going to be done right if I uh, let's make sure everything is generated so generate stitches and make that 3D and let's watch it uh, stitch out in fact I'm now going to get rid of these um, I'm going to get rid of my guidelines so if I go into design uh, no edit sorry um, here where it says lock guidelines because I did that earlier and it's checked I'm going to unlock them and I'm actually going to erase that okay so here where it says erase guidelines and they're all gone okay so we're in 3d mode our stitches are simulated and I'm going to simulate now and let's have a look at how it stitches out let's speed it up a bit placement stitch this is the part where I put down my faux leather and then it starts stitching on top of the faux leather my lines for my pencil I'm going to be using yellow faux leather um, for this so that will be the background so what you're seeing as white at the end of uh, this stitch out will be actually yellow I'll be using uh, yellow faux leather so it will really look like a pencil so we're doing the rubber now next the metal uh, part of the eraser we can see it's not stopped there because I made a connection now we're doing the wooden part so the sequencing is fine everything is stitching out in the correct order there's my tip and then the final the final stitch and uh, that is it I will also be um, putting up a video of me actually doing the stitch out in uh, real life on my Janome 550 embroidery machine um, initially I did a different design where I did a notebook and I actually personalized it but the font was so tiny and because of the fabric um, the actual faux leather it kind of tore into the faux leather so I've kind of um, given up on kind of personalizing this because the area between here for example which would be a, a really nice place to personalize is just so tiny that any kind of uh, font uh, that you put in here will just chew up the fabric so I've given up on that what I might do is use some permanent vinyl to personalize uh, these type of uh, objects uh, like this bookmark I'll be putting out more videos on how I digitize uh, lots of different things I am uh, new to Embird I'm not an expert I'm discovering new things every day about how to digitize on this software I'm finding it's not as intuitive as um, other softwares that I've used that are not necessarily embroidery uh, software for example I use um, 
illustrator and photoshop and i've used many other um, uh, vector based uh, software and i find that it's a lot more intuitive we really need to kind of dig into this software to find out how to use it but once you know how to use it you uh you know it can really make things uh, a lot more pleasurable when you're um digitizing so if you've um found this useful or interesting and um you would like to see more from my channel please um like this video okay give it a thumbs up and um subscribe if you haven't yet done so thank you for watching okay do join me again and as always don't have a good day have an amazing day